Okay. Uh, Dennis, again, I apologize. And this video will be on your wall when you awake to reassure you that uh, humanity did hear your call. And I will always do as I say. Uh, I try to get on things right away. Uh, I hope this is evident. Uh, it is to anyone that has tested me on this uh, or interacted with me. Hopefully, if you're here for the first time, you'll understand that uh, this is an important issue to me. If it's an important issue to you, and it's in the hope of protecting someone else, it's going to be my priority. It really is. Premeditated betrayal, the Cornhusker Ammunition Army Ammunition Plant. 1942 operations began at the Cornhusker Army Ammunition Plant, CAAP, uh, CAPP, located outside the town of Grand Isle, Nebraska, population 33,000. 33, Facility covered 19 square miles of farmland in the Platte River Valley. The plant packed explosive into munitions ranging from 105 meter shells to 1,000 pound bombs. During the peak of the Vietnam War buildup, the plant ran full-time six days a week, employing just over 5,000 workers. The plant was shut down one day a week so that the explosive dust that settled everywhere could be washed away. Otherwise, the dust might ignite. Substances used to make explosives included TNT, RDX, and aluminum flakes. The cleaning process produced vast quantities of wastewater contaminated with these toxins. Another source of wastewater at the plant was laundry. Workers typically came off shift with their clothes coated with dust. After every shift, each worker removed his or her clothes on site and left them uh, with the plant laundry. Now, I just want to comment. I, for a very short time, I was in uh, the Army Reserves. And if, uh, when you go to clean a facility, Army style, I can picture that. I've seen us doing it in the, uh, in the uh, motor pool. You'll hose and squeegee uh, and, and let it go. Never think about it. And I didn't think about it myself uh, till then. And surely that's not as drastic as what we're reading here. But just from a, a common sense, a common man way of thinking, I remember doing that. I know it wasn't in a munitions, but if I'm doing it there, uh, why wouldn't they have done it there? So I, I can see that. I just I'm trying to give everybody that doesn't understand or hasn't uh, isn't aware of these things the reality of you know instead of just saying oh they couldn't have done that and, and walking away yes yes they could have and that was the simplest way to do it hose it down maybe add a chemical or a cleaner uh, in our case to raise grease and oil so gas and oil you know uh, would have been going into the water supply never thought about it then. Um, Okay, back to this. In 1970, during the height of the production of the Vietnam War, uh, the Army actually kept track of the laundry's wastewater, estimating that the procedure generated daily outflow of approximately 473 cubic meters, roughly 100,000 gallons of water, uh, contaminated with explosive residues. Daily. Daily. Every day. 100,000 gallons of toxic water. Uh, see, see what I mean by when I said this is so disgusting and vile. I didn't read the, on um, very far because I knew I knew. Uh, this wall. I'm just going to uh, paraphrase from here. Excuse me, but this is disgusting, vile, evil perpetrated by our government, plain as day, hidden in plain view, the same type of stuff I keep telling you, that if it comes, I'm, I'm sick of the bullshit. I really am sick of the bullshit. You know? It's not fear-mongering. It's not anything but pure, evil bullshit. Uh, so this water, wastewater, was referred to as red water, uh, and th that designation came from high concentrations of th uh, TNT, which gave the water a pinkish tint. It was deposited in a network of more than 50 cesspools and leaching pits, and normally, I know this from the common world too, when you sneak a washer into your home and, and your septic doesn't support it, 
you, you build a, uh, a dry well with rock or a plastic tub, and you let the wash water go in there because it has no feces in it, so it, it's technically fine to do, and it doesn't put the burden uh, or where I come from, it's fine to do. It's commonplace. It doesn't put the burden on the septic system, and it leaches into the water supply. And nom normally, the phosphates are good for the ground. But if it's toxic TNT, and you're talking about 100,000 gallons a day, I, I haven't even comprehended the math of how long this went on. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to. People are dying from this, and I don't need to read any more to fully understand that. Now, there's much more that I'll read about it, much more that I need to read about it to be fully effective to help Dennis, and I will. But this is enough to disgust me for today. And at almost 1 o'clock in the morning, it'll still be another hour until I'm able to get this video complete and it reaches you. But I'm going to do that. And I hope that you'll take this video, mirror it, share it, spread it around, support Dennis. As soon as he has the petition signed, I will bring it back here to the video and include it. In the time being, I will give you a link to this PDF file. And I'm asking everybody to download the PDF file and save it somewhere, please. This, as soon as this gets out for a while, and we are going to get attention to this. This is the thing. Maybe it's still there because nobody has paid attention. They weren't me, okay? I'm going to reach people with this. With every click of the mouse, I reach between 17,000 and 100,000 people. I'm going to be clicking the mouse quite often on this issue, and this document will be taken down. So I, I beg you all now, as soon as I'm done with this video and it's processed, I will go download it. I don't want to burden the computer and have something foul up because that's been my luck lately. I'm going to download it and save it. I'm going to put it on a flash drive that I keep in my pocket because this type of stuff disappears. I've already seen it in my own world with people that have called in to me about a nuclear reactor that's probably leaking and with witnesses that say that it wasn't constructed to standards. In Nebraska, Wolf Creek, look into that as well. The person that brought me that information has since disappeared from my social networks and as far as I was concerned, she was my friend. A single mother with a dead husband who's battling cancer and raising her three kids and because she brought the truth out she was threatened with the taking of her children and I haven't been able to interact with her since so Dennis uh, please protect yourself everybody else help me protect Dennis download this PDF uh, uh, make a copy of this video Please put it away on a flash drive, something, whatever you can do to preserve this video, share it, this documentation, and help protect Dennis. Dennis, I'm going to recommend you and anyone that sees this video, go to my blog, Human to Human. Uh, give me your contact info. Get on there as well. As soon as your petition's in, Dennis, we'll add that to the Human to Human. Uh, that's what it's there for. Check that out. I'll put the link. Uh, God bless you all for trusting me to bring me these issues. Uh, I will give them my...